It is foul filth. It is vile venom. It is repulsive rubbish. It is an atrocious abomination. It is a pestilent plaque. The evil of which I speak is none other than marijuana. Pot is for the birds. Marijuana harm mentally, physically, and spiritually. There are many ways in which marijuana harms us mentally. Researchers have shown marijuana, like many drugs, impairs one's ability to concentrate. When you can't concentrate on whatever task you're doing, you become less effective at it. You decrease your ability to succeed in the world. At some tasks, effectivity, effectiveness is vital for safety. If you can't concentrate in some situations, you jeopardize the safety of yourself, possibly the safety of others. One of the most important tasks of which concentration is key is driving. Not enough people recognize the dangers of driving under the influence of marijuana. Even though research has demonstrated this. A few years ago, I was hanging out with some of my friends. While interacting with one of my friends in the back of his mind, I had this feeling there something wasn't right with it. I couldn't quite put a finger on it. There was just a small inkling back in my head that she wasn't quite the same. Soon, the other friend informed me she was this friend was under the influence of marijuana. It all made sense. I was also horrified when I realized she drove to this event under the influence of marijuana. I wanted to make sure she couldn't drive home. It was a big fight. Even my other friend didn't believe what I was doing was right. She didn't think my concern was necessary. She thought I was overreacting. She didn't think marijuana did anything to drive. After this situation, I was trying to confide in one of my other friends. She was not sympathetic at all. She ranted and raved for both years. Talk about all oh, drugs are bad. Oh my god, I smoke pot, I got pretty. What a cocky thing. She thinks she is so spectacular. Nothing's going to stop her. She can drive under anything. That's not the way I want to be. In order to prove my point to that friend, who is skeptical of my concern, I showed her a book which was full of research showing all the ways marijuana harms. One father was concerned about his kids using marijuana, therefore he sent his kids tons of research to make his case so strong. One piece of research demonstrated how marijuana decreased a person's ability to drive. Researchers have also noted marijuana 
decreases one's memory, especially short-term memory. Memory is also very important. Pretty much everything you do in some way relies on memory. Our memory is difficult to function. The less memory you have, the more difficult it is to function. The better you are to remember, the better you can be in most anything. I even knew a pot smoker when I was in college who freely admitted marijuana killed her memory. But to her, it wasn't that big of a deal. She just didn't value her mind. As a person who loves to create, who is very expressive, who likes to produce much art, I want to have my artistic abilities always as good as they can be. David Crosby of the band Crosby, Stills, and Nash in an interview said something along the lines, I used to think, I used to tell myself I was taking drugs because they made me write better music, even though they really made me write worse music. I was just using that as a rationalization. Upton Sinclair wrote about another drug that many of his contemporaries succeeded not because of the drug that they often believe, but in spite of it. Thus, anyone who succeeds with marijuana is not succeeding because of marijuana, but in spite of it. I once saw a talk show where someone boasted how he smoked pot every day and got straight in. He's one of these cocky individuals who think nothing can stop him. I don't know how you can be that way. When you live in the real world, cockiness is not tenable. Observers have noted marijuana is often a gateway drug, one that leads to greater drug use. Maybe someone takes marijuana, then the person takes opium or LSD. Maybe it works all the way up to heroin. PCP. Who knows? Crystal nothing. One of the worst drugs out there. Your plane was fire, that's for sure. Plus, you have to realize something very important. Not only are you falling on a slippery slope every drug you try, but also, when you are under the influence of a drug, you're not thinking so clearly. Therefore, if you may want to avoid certain drugs because it's so blatantly potent, you may not have the consent to resist it. In addition to these mental harms arising from marijuana use, there are physical harms. Researchers have shown marijuana to decrease one's sexual performance. We all like sex, so why would anyone want to do this? To some people, marijuana is more important than sex observers have known. So very, very sad. worse than taking it while you're having sex is taking it when you're pregnant. We all know there's lots of birth effects that can result from alcohol. Marijuana is really no different. It's unwise to take any drug when you're pregnant. Try to avoid that. You shouldn't be taking drugs anyway. But if you must, at least stay free from them during your pregnancy or else you may cause much damage to your child. So often I 
in the highest. There is a very one, there is a very one. Often it seems to be a rationalization of those who use marijuana recreationally but don't have a good argument for legalization. These people are trying to appeal to our sense of decency. These people want to persuade us that by legalizing marijuana you're helping the sick. You're really more helping the recreational users who want to get stoned all the time. I am skeptical of how much marijuana can help the sick. I don't believe there's enough research that has been done. It seems to be an un unjustified claim. Furthermore, marijuana, when used medically, still falls prey to the problem inherent in Western medicine. Opponents of Western medicine say the big problem with Western medicine is the fact Western medicine is so fixated on going after symptoms while not going after causes. Opponents say drugs are often used to suppress symptoms instead of getting to the root of the problem. Marijuana does exactly this. Would marijuana ever cure a disease? Probably not. A person could feel that pain, but it's more of the old joke where your leg is hurting. Oh, fix that problem. Slap your hand with a hammer. No, you don't care so much about your leg, do you, joke? of fasting say fasting is good for our health because fasting gets to the root of the problem not just going after the system it allows the body to heal effectively folks say. I believe many people use medical marijuana want to use medical marijuana but not fasting because these two practices are very different one is virtuous the other is not Medical marijuana is easy to use, light up a cigarette, doesn't take any discipline, strength, or courage. Fasting can be difficult. In the short run, you can experience discomfort. The result that discomfort is good for you because in the long run, you are becoming healthier. It takes great patience, great stamina, great discipline to go through with a fast. People use marijuana because it's easy. Fasting is avoided because it's hard. Some guys, the hard is the most virtuous. Thus, we should try it the most. Plus, marijuana has some cancer-causing compounds in it. So it makes no sense to try that for disease. Why stop? Why stop the pain of one disease that causes another? It doesn't make sense. Any type of smoke is bad for the lungs. I don't care what the smoke is made of. Whether it's tobacco, marijuana, PCP, or glue. The lungs don't want smoke. The lungs hot when there is smoke. Some note, when people use marijuana, it's often inhaled deeply, therefore, the harm of it is magnified. We all know smoking causes cancer except for a few wine tobacco folks. Do we also think marijuana? Smoking can cause cancer? It can. Bob Marley, one of the most famous pot smokers in history, died at a very young age from lung cancer. It's only a coincidence that he smoked lots of pot. He got lung cancer.
Herbert M. Shelton, one of the leading health advocates of the 20th century, noted there are two types of substances. He said there are foods and drugs. He said foods are good for us. They are nutrients, while poisons are bad for us. He said poison should be abstained from completely, while food should be used moderately. He said poisons harm the body system by destroying the cells. He considered drugs like marijuana to be a prime example of these poisons. He said these drugs can harm the body system. Why do we use them then? In addition to these mental and physical harms, there are spiritual harms. The band Earth Crisis says, there's too much to experience and accomplish to waste a precious second drunk or haste. The band believes there's so many wonderful experiences in your life. One should not squander any precious moments in the defiling pursuit of marijuana. a famous, certainly popular pot smoker saying on his head, time is always wasted when you're wasted. Some people act as if smoking pot is this great experience. It's not. It's not an experience at all. In order to have an experience, you have to be able to experience it. When you're under the influence of marijuana, your mind is gone. How can the experience of marijuana be so great as they can hold a candle to going to war, going on a fast, running a marathon. It can't. These other experiences are difficult, make you a stronger, better person. Smoking blood is not one. Some people try to argue, if you haven't tried it, you can't not. If you haven't tried being run, run over by a dump truck, you can't knock it. We haven't tried putting your name in a mouth and pointing a pin. You haven't tried punching all your teeth out. But we know this is not a good idea. It's utter stupidity to say you have to try something in order to know it's good or not. You can learn the hard way or the easy way. I would choose the easy way. Learn from the experience of others. But pot smokers are so stubborn and dumb that they insist you have to try something in order to know it's not a good idea. That is one of the worst arguments around. Bill Barth is a friend of mine and I were hosting Bradford Little the speaker at two Federation of Television conferences for a dinner before one of the conferences. We were describing how we dislike drugs. He made a very wonderful comment. He said, drugs take an edge off a person. He said, most anyone he's seen using drugs have become worse because of it. He said, what he liked about the person, he went away when the person took the drug. So very true. In fact, drugs take our very humanity away from us. When we use drugs like marijuana, we are denying our homo sapien nature and devolving into something not quite human. Look into the eyes of someone's story and you say a monster. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. People who don't use drugs are Dr. Jekyll. People who do become Mr. Hyde. These people become lunatics, nutcases, fools. People I want to avoid. Opponents of drug use have said one of the big problems with drugs, like marijuana, is these drugs are cop up which people use when there are problems they don't want to face. These observers say 
We should think of them. I agree. Kind of how can you think of it? All our lives are full of tragedies, obstacles, challenges, adversity. Not facing these problems, smoking marijuana, when anything gets difficult, there's no solution. When you are bold enough to face life on, you benefit. You grow as a person. You become stronger. Just like Nietzsche said, that which does not kill me only makes me stronger. You feel empowered. You feel actualized. Because you're doing something that is difficult. The weak way out is what the pot smokers do. I was arguing with one pot smoker who tried to suggest that marijuana wasn't harming him. He said, I smoke pot daily. And I am only my end of the conversation. He is one of these cocky people who think nothing can stop him. He is so good, he's so high, so mighty, he's so arrogant. I don't want to be that way. I don't think nothing can stop him. Which I know. That is not the case. What was really interesting was even though know, his mind may not be completely destroyed right away, though in the long run it will, there's something that is completely destroyed right away. His soul. Prime evidence of this was what he was saying about his motivation level. He said he used to be involved in the group UCAN, United Cannabis Advocacy Network, the co-legalization of marijuana group. He said he was no longer interested in doing that. Could it be that marijuana is introducing this apathy? Why take something that kills your soul? I love to be around those with sex, life, exuberance, passion. Why take something that destroys it? Pot smokers are so apathetic. Could this be why? The movement hasn't succeeded? Too busy smoking pot, not doing enough activists. Observers have long noted marijuana for disability. I see it. These people aren't all there when they're smoking. As one activist said, drugs and activism just don't make. What is more important than your soul? To some people, the pleasure of being stoned is. To me, that is a horrible bargain to make. It reminds me of a Simpson episode where Homer sold his soul for a jelly donut. Although that was humorous, in a way, it did suggest how some hedonistic people are willing to trade something so important for just a small amount of pleasure. It's foolishness. Unfortunately, we don't have the right answer out there to deal with marijuana. We have two extremist approaches approaches which wrestle or control. One extremist approach says marijuana is completely innocuous, therefore we need to legalize it and not have the government involved. The other approach says marijuana is harmful, we need to throw people in jail, give criminal records, we need to break down people's doors, we need to seize property. We need to violate constitutional rights because marijuana is that harmful. How can you choose from those two? Neither of those approaches have it all right. They both have elements that are right. But alone, both of these approaches are incredibly harmful for society. I recommend taking the best part of both. The economy party, my political party, has the optimal solution. It recommends, just like the legalization advocates say, we shouldn't throw people in prison or criminally punish them for marijuana use, all 
also recognizing the other side which says marijuana is harmful, we should go after it. Thus, our party suggests we have a policy where we destroy marijuana without punishing the user in any way. If I had my way, anyone that was charged with any crime would have the record erased, compensated for the damage, plus whoever was in jail would be left free. Whoever was fined would be paid back. I believe we should go after marijuana when it's produced. Marijuana is tricky because there are useful ways to use the hemp plant. Some of these legalization advocates are not so concerned about the good aspects of hemp, but just want to try to get us winning over, try to confuse industrial hemp and marijuana. If we're destroying marijuana, we need to be careful. We should probably just destroy it when it's manufactured, not the plants themselves. Because hemp is very valuable, as many have noted. Some have noted hemp can increase, can be good for the environment since it can be paper instead of trees. There's lots of uses people have found for hemp. Some even say hemp is a good food. There are cereals, bars, nut butters made out of hemp. I'm wary about hemp as food, not because I doubt the health benefits of it, which are quite good since it has all eight amino acids, which soy is about the only other vegetable food which does. What I'm worried about is the THC content. I've heard contradictory claims. Some people say there's no THC, others say there's a little bit. A little is a little too much for me. I don't want to have any in my system. Even if there is some, it still couldn't be enough to do anything. A couple of examples that I was some degree or another personally involved in illustrate the follies of our current approaches to drugs. There was a place of mine in college who was a really good guy kind, caring, honest, very likable. He wanted to be a teacher. Unfortunately, he was caught with marijuana. He got probation because of it. One of his biggest fears was potential career problems that may arise from a criminal record. He was afraid he wouldn't be able to teach because of his criminal record. I hope people are sensible enough to not hold it against him. If you do, hold it against all beer drinkers. Since so many notice that we shouldn't have a double standard with alcohol and marijuana. It really bothered me when that Stephen Ginsburg was not concerned as a judge because he smoked marijuana in law school. Surely it was not a good idea. But I don't know if that alone is a good idea. If so, don't let any beer drinker get into any office. We could save our world lots of trouble if that happens. George Bush sure drank his share of beer in his day. Don't let him be president. I was involved in student government my last year of college. Student government 
dealt with issues that pertain to the local campus community, plus broader issues on a statewide and national scale, which in some way related to the working of students on our campus. A couple of years before I was in student government, one senator of student government named Michael Roth introduced a piece of legislation which opposed a government policy which denies financial aid to convicted drug users or dealers. I thought opposing this government policy is a great idea, therefore I brought the bill back. The discussion we had that night was one of the most insightful and revealing that we had in my tenure in student government. People argued about the ambivalence we have and the double standards we have about some drugs being bad, some drugs being not so bad. One of the core complaints about the policy was this policy singles out drug use as something so bad that one should be denied financial aid because of it without denying aid to those guilty of worse crimes such as murder, rape, and child molestation. The argument was, people said, if you are going to deny aid to someone smoking pot, should you deny aid to murders too? Even Michael Moore made an argument like that in his book. Some people were so hard on it that it was a good cause. These people didn't think much, plus they were hypocrites because they guzzled down tons of beer. I told the people, I'm against pot more than probably anyone there. In fact, before I introduced that piece of legislation, I even wrote an anti-pot editorial similar to what I'm saying here tonight. But denying financial aid to pot users is not the answer. The Multicultural and Diversity Director noted how this policy mostly affected those of low socioeconomic status. He said since most of those convicted of drug offenses are of those that plus there are other ways socioeconomic status plays a role. If you're rich, the fines don't matter. Even if it's one dollar an hour, that's a drop in the bucket for you. If you're living in the ghetto, one thousand dollars is a lot of money. If you're wealthy, even a criminal record might not matter. You can get all the connections you need. You can have some cool strings for you, as some believe happened with George W. Bush when he was caught using cocaine. What that multicultural and diversity director also noted, people of lower socioeconomic status are more dependent on AIDS Therefore, denying them a may be denying them a very opportunity to get an education. Someone who's rich doesn't really need aid in the first place. Therefore, even if the, the person would get a drug conviction, it wouldn't matter much. One of our Republican members made one of the most profound statements. He said, this policy is preventing people from improving themselves. He said there are people both 
party have new drugs? George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. What a great sentiment. Sometimes you realize some Republicans really do care. He certainly wasn't advocating drug use, but he thought it was wrong to deny people the opportunity to prove themselves. If you take away education from a drug user, the person loses a positive force in their in person's life. The person cannot make themselves better, ultimately society better. Everyone's dragged in. The person who's going to school, the person who's doing things instructive. The person has less time for marijuana. Sadly, people think such policy is good. Fortunately, our piece of legislation opposition to this act main government policy passed. Only about three members of three rigid schools, though I would say they are schools overall, but that night they are schools. We can certainly see shades of gray. We can recognize marijuana is harmful. We can also recognize the current policies are off. It is off fit. It is vile offense. It is repulsive rubbish. It is an atrocious abomination. It is a pestilent threat. The evil of which I speak is marijuana. Pot is for the birds. Good evil. 